Slurtle me this, snurtle me that. So look who's back with all new facts. Well, kind of. Folks, information about these slimy snails was spread across three, technically four guys from the last three plus years, and that simply won't do anymore. So then, let us talk their basics, their special shells of course, some easy loot farming potential, and more, yes. If we know how to slip and slide our way to them, that is. For you see, while it is indeed possible to find these cave exclusive mobs in various biomes, the vast majority will be located in the wild specific Specifically. But more specifically, it's going to be the parts of the wilds away from all the lichen like seen here. But whatever the case may be, their numbers should never be in question. All Slurtle mounds should be home to one to two Slurtles or Snurtles that can be interchanged when and if they do spawn, and more on this in a bit. And as you just saw, there are also a ton of mounds around, making for some big groups of these things potentially. Couple that possibility with an insanely fast respawn timer of less than half a day per Slurtle or Snurtle, and good things can happen very quickly if you know the path forward. But if you don't, that's fine, because I'm here to tell you anyways. Now, it's entirely likely that you're going to see the mounds before the Slurtles and or Snurtles, because only one thing will be bringing them out, naturally. Minerals. Now, Earthquake shop minerals every one to three days at rapid rates, and come these times, the snails are going to be out in mass no matter what. But ain't no one got time for that, so here are two other suggestions. Blocking these Slurtle mounds to make the suckers show up, but bear in mind that you will also be aggroing them to you if you do this, and or fire. Fire that you can hopefully put out mine for reasons that we'll be discussing at the end here, but this is by far our best option, especially if we want to keep re-rolling for Snurtles, so go get a watering can today. Because as I alluded to briefly, every time a mound spawns one of these things, it's going to have a 90% chance to be a Slurtle and a 10% chance to be a Snurtle. Both are decent and drop some pretty great stuff, but it's truly the latter that almost breaks the game. As we saw right there, Snurtles are ultra passive and super skittish beasts, making them incredibly easy to murder if and when they do spawn, just as long as you don't try to hit them when they're in their shells. But when you do kill them, they drop two Slurtle slime guaranteed and have a 75% chance to drop Snurtle shell armor here. Thing is though, there's also a 25% chance of said armor breaking into a broken shell. And you don't want that. Trust me. Yeah, sure. The things only have 735 durability and a 60% damage absorption rate, but if used properly, they can actually negate 100% of all incoming damage. Yes, you heard that right. If you're hiding in the shell, any physical damage taken is fully negated. Not only that though, hiding in a Snurtle shell for roughly 5 seconds will cause Cause whatever is attacking you, even boss's mind, to drop all aggro as seen here. Oh yes, Snurtle shell armor is pretty gosh darn amazing. But this is still a Slurtle guide as well, so let's not forget about him, eh? Fighting Slurtles is not as easy as they've got a whopping 1200 health, an annoyingly long bite range if I'm honest, and a shell that absorbs 95% of damage this time. Still, they are very kiteable as you can see, and as long as you know that these snails are horde-like, you should be okay. I just wouldn't try to fight more than two at a time if I were you. Unless, of course, you know the secrets of the tail low three cats here. This thing absolutely breaks Slurtles, as once you get the 25% chance of a snap against a shelled Slurtle, they become 100% useless, making for the easiest kills of all flippin' time. And what do we get out of it, you ask? The Shelmets. These things have even less durability than the armor, but are tied at the top of all helmets across all of Don't Starve history when it comes to the damage absorption rates, so there you go. Thing is though, Slurtles only drop them 10% of the time, meaning 90% of the time, we'll be getting broken shells instead. And that reminds me, this is still an entire mob guide, so what is this Slurtle slime and broken shell nonsense? Well, the slime is essentially natural gunpowder that deals way less damage overall, four times less to be exact, but as we'll come to find out, amassing the stuff is a heck of a lot easier than gunpowder, therefore it's actually a pretty cool and fun alternative at the end of the day. And heck, I don't remember gunpowder being able to help us refuel our lanterns and or miners hats, so there you go. It's another win for the stuff. But if you want the green goo, you need to make the snails poo. 
And no, I am not kidding. Slurtles and Snurtles both produce Slurtle slime following the consumption of all minerals besides marble, however they also need to reach a certain value to do so. Six to be exact. And as you can see at the right there, we've got some better and way more efficient options than others. To save you the headache though, just note that all of Walter's slingshot ammo counts here, so you'll want to use poop pellets. Trust me, ain't no one going way, way out of their way to provide these guys with an extravagant Ambrosia feast. But speaking of minerals and such, do be aware that if you yourself have some in your inventory, or if there's a chest nearby, these guys will rummage through both if there are no more to be found elsewhere on the ground. They will drop all aggro once they are gone though, as they're kind of neutral mobs all around, but just be aware what you have around these things, especially after an earthquake. To continue though, the broken shells that you'll be seeing a lot of can go into potted ferns as decor structures, can now be transformed into shell bumper armor essentially, although said armor is for our boats at the end of the day, help make the turf found on Pearl's very island, and finally, go into the seed packet, which is arguably the best option here, as seed packets are the same as fridges, but they're for seeds and seeds alone, so you can save all the space in your fridges. But before we go today, allow me to not save face by absolutely brutally murdering these guys and their homes in a very terrible way fire. Throughout the video, you very likely noticed a bunch of information about their explosion damage and wondered how in the bloody world any of that applied. Well, just know it does. For both the snails themselves and their homes, it deals a lot of damage too, and you have to be very careful about accidentally destroying their very weak homes because they are not renewable in any way, shape, or form. The loot is not worth it, my friends, and you won't get any loot from exploding slurtles or snurtles. But there you have it, everyone, a slimy yet lovely return to the deep dark caves of Don't Starve Together for none other than its incredible slurtles and snurtles, some of the very first mobs that I ever covered on this channel. I'm happy to not only have all the information in one place now, but if you noticed, Past Beard didn't mention a lot of this crap back when, so another score for Present Beard there. Thanks for watching, folks. Well, Wish it to all, get shelled up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.